it is pertinent, it is important that the pulmonary capillary should be thin so that when the blood is moving fast, the oxygen should be easily be able to traverse the entire diameter of the capillary and reach into the alveoli. So, the pathophysiology of HPS. The pathophysiology mainly involves dilatation of the pulmonary capillaries which produces intrapulmonary within the lung, right to left shunting functionally of the blood. To make it more clear, in patients with advanced or chronic liver disease, what sometimes happens is the pulmonary capillaries, normally pulmonary capillary diameter is only 8 to 15 micrometer. You know that pulmonary capillaries have oxygenated blood flowing through them. There is a pulmonary capillary, there is a alveolus and oxygen diffusion between the two is happening. It is pertinent, it is important that the pulmonary capillary should be thin so that when the blood is moving fast, the oxygen should be easily be able to traverse the entire diameter of the capillary and reach into the alveoli. If this pulmonary capillary is too big or too thick, what will happen is the entire oxygen will not be able to diffuse into the alveoli producing hypoxemia. That is the basis of this disease. So, to make it more clear, let us have a look on what I told you. See, this is the alveolus, right? And this is the pulmonary capillary. There is a ventilation part, there is a perfusion part. There is always a balance between the two. Because the diameter of the capillary is very thin, it is 8 to 15 micrometers, all the oxygen carried by RBCs in the center, that oxygen is freely able to move into this alveolus because the capillary is thin. What happens in hepatopulmonary syndrome is due to a chronic liver disease, there is dilatation of these pulmonary capillaries and this becomes thick like this. The diameter becomes as high as 15 to 100 micrometers. It may sometimes be associated with minor angiogenesis or new thickened and, uh, capillary formation as well. However, it is mainly the dilatation. The diameter has increased. Now, the blood is flowing, but there will not be sufficient time for this oxygen to diffuse into alveolus. So, if earlier, say 10 ml was diffusing, I am just giving a random example. Now, because the capillary diameter is more, only 5 of that is diffusing. So, that 5 deficit or uh, which is the less oxygen which is going produces a state where gradual dyspnea and in stress conditions hypoxemia can develop producing cyanosis in the patient. So, the reason for HPS is chronic liver disease or advanced liver disease, severe liver disease, shunting of uh, mediators away from the portal circulation, it reaches capillaries, it causes dilatation of pulmonary capillaries. Due to dilatation, oxygen exchange gets impaired producing hypoxemia. What are the abnormalities seen in pathophysiology of HPS? This is a very very important question not in super speciality for pediatrics but in adult need super speciality it in hepatology it has already been asked as a fresh question. Whether it is hepatopulmonary syndrome in child or adult, pathophysiology remains the same. So, similar question can be repeated in pediatric super speciality also. So, it is already repeated past question. So, there is a list given in standard books. We will remember the entire list. So, abnormality seen. First of all, there is pulmonary vessel dilatation producing cyanosis, which I have just told you. This is the most important thing. Then, because of this dilatation, there will be ventilation perfusion mismatch. The question was something like this. All of the following are seen in hepatopulmonary syndrome except. Third thing, there is fall in both systemic as well as pulmonary vascular resistance. There is a hyperdynamic circulation and high cardiac output which is seen in these patients. And the reason for all this is the vasodilatory mediators from mesenteric circulation, they bypass liver due to liver disease. We call it as portosystemic shunting. Normally, the such mediators are filtered out by the liver. Now, since they are able to reach the pulmonary circulation directly, they may cause this problem. Why certain people only develop hepatopulmonary and others do not? Again, there are a lot of theories, but no consensus regarding the reason for that. It is still an area of active research.